My name is Walter Michel, and I'm a professor at Columbia University. Uh, what I uh, have been studying for uh, about 45 or 50 years now is how children develop self-control and what the implications of self-control are for their lives uh, as they grow up. Uh, self-control, which used to be called willpower, is obviously terribly important. It's been an issue for us ever since Adam and Eve uh, lost paradise because they couldn't resist the temptation of the serpent and the apple. Uh, what I developed when I started uh, studying the problem of self-control is a measure that's now called the marshmallow test. Actually, we, we very often use things that aren't marshmallows. They can be M&Ms, they can be Oreo cookies. It's whatever the child picks from a, se a set of assorted goodies that we have available for her or for him. And what we find is that when the children are given a choice between having two of their very, very favorite things, like two Oreo cookies or two marshmallows, that they can have if they wait by themselves until the researcher comes back to the room, which can be as long as 20 minutes. Um, if, they, if they do that, uh, they get the two things that they've been waiting for. But if they want to, at any time, they can ring the bell or start eating one of those cookies or whatever it is that they're waiting for, and then they don't get the two preferred objects. And what we found in many studies is that the choices they make uh, have uh, very serious connections uh, to uh, how their lives uh, work out in the sense that kids who are able to self-regulate to delay gratification by the time they're four or five or six years old have a much better chance of doing well at school, have a much better chance of thriving as adolescents and moving on in life. But that's only the start of the story, because far more important is the discovery that we made, which is that willpower and self-control are cognitive skills which we've been able to identify, which are quite easily teachable, not only to children, but to adults. And the reason that I've written a popular book on this subject is because I think there are very simple strategies that are available to all of us that can enhance our ability to regulate our emotions, to regulate our temptations, uh, and to allow us to take future consequences into account. The implications of this are particularly important for education. And one of the places in which I've been very happy to see the use of the methods and ideas that come out of the work on self-control are in the KIPP schools, knowledge is power programs, uh, that are all over the United States now that have been developed by people uh, to really help kids who are living under conditions of high stress and in high poverty, toxic poverty environments, to have a better chance uh, to make the most of their lives. Uh, to see kids learning these self-control skills in these schools has been a wonderful experience for me. And I think that there are lessons to be learned by teachers throughout the world for how to help young children particularly under, who are living particularly under conditions of high poverty and high stress uh, to develop the trust expectations and the cognitive skills that they need to become more oriented to the future and to be able to make choices that allow them to make the most of their lives.